Where we left off last class, I was using various tools to create vector shapes on top of my refined sketch. I'm saving it as a cloud file just by going to File, Save As, and saving it to the Creative Cloud. And when I do that, it saves as an AIC file. So that's Adobe Illustrator Cloud. I can also save it as a regular AI file to my computer, right? And I want to do that to my desktop and then navigate it to the right folder or just put it directly into the right folder. That's up to you. Why do I have so much in here? So I always navigate from the desktop and then this is going to be assignment for my vector logo. So as we're working on it, we're going to keep it in what's called a working format. PSD was the working file format for Photoshop documents. AI is the working format for Illustrator documents. It means it opens up an Illustrator and it should remember all of your tool settings and even your setup. Right. Okay, we talked about the Pathfinder tool. It's important to have the Pathfinder in your sidebar here because it's very, very helpful. It can also be helpful to have your colors in the sidebar, though there's other ways to access that menu. And it's important to have your layers and your properties. The libraries you don't need to worry about so much. That's a bunch of like asset files you can load in if there are certain vectors you use over and over again. But we are creating our own original stuff right now. So I'm going to start in layers, and I'm just going to kind of click through and see what's on each layer. Because remember, these layers are organizational. Every time you make a new path, it will make it will uh, give you a way to select that individual path within these layer groups. So the first layer I have that's locked is my sketch. I have that onion skinned, right? which just means it's dimmed to 50%. You can do that by just double clicking on the layer and clicking that option or taking its transparency down. Transparency is another good, good one to have in your sidebar. On top of that, I have my vector shapes. And I have ones that I don't need. So how do I select the ones I don't need? I have to unlock that layer and I can go to the small selection tool the white arrow, click on them, and see them within my layer group. Bless you. So once they're selected, I can just click on the trash can or I can just hit delete and it will get rid of it. Right. And then you'll see this little drop down arrow because when you have a lot of paths, all kind of when you merge them together, I merge them together using Pathfinder. This is all now one shape because everything here is one piece of black paper and if I were to cut this with scissors out of black paper it would all hold together this would be like a really good stencil right not all vector designs are like that you might have free floating shapes but as we build onto it I'm going to keep connecting it so it's all one shape okay now I'm building on some of the different stuff like the line qualities, I was showing you blob brush at the end of last class. And I wanted to show you kind of the, the benefits and the limits of it. So blob brush allows you, I'll review it here. I have this as my blob brush layer to simply, it's underneath the regular paintbrush tool, to simply paint with your tablet. It's very tablet specific. And, and play with pressure sensitivity when that's a function. Our new computers will support it. Some of these older computers have problems with that. But you can set it to be pressure sensitive. You can set its size and you can set it to smooth. So if it's a really organic logo, which mine really isn't, there's a lot of kind of straights and sharp edges. But Blob Brush is a great way to kind of quickly map something out. It's just not super clean. So I'm doing it on its own layer so you can see. 
So what's the problem with blob brush? I mean, I can just fill in just like I'm painting. And it will merge that all into one vector, which is fantastic. As long as it's overlapping. But you'll notice, just like in, in regular inking or painting, if I want a sharp edge, I then have to go back in and use a different tool to sharpen it. And that, that different tool I like to use is pencil, where I can redraw with magic scissors as long as I start on the path, go through an anchor point, and end on the path. So that's kind of a, a quick way that you can build up a logo. I'm going to compare that with the pen tool. Because for this design, which is pretty clean, the pen tool, I think, is a better option. So let me show you what I mean. I'm going to build a new layer, and I'm just going to call that More Pen Tool, which is the foundational tool of Illustrator. It's right underneath the Small Selection Tool. This is a great way to use the pen tool, no matter how complicated your shapes are. You click, you move, you click, you don't ever click and drag. You just keep everything as a really sharp angle, right? Kind of sharp polygons. I'll do it to here. And then you always want to close your path by going back to where you started. There's a little circle that appears next to the tool. Okay, now that I've closed the path, how do I change this to actually fit the subtle curves and sharps that I want? What I can do is go under the pen tool to the anchor point tool. The shortcut for it is shift C. And then where do I want to curve? I want this to curve slightly. And if I, I can always go to transparency and take its transparency down as I'm building it on top of my sketch. So I'm going to take this point and I'm going to click and drag and that will turn the top to a curve. Okay. The problem is it also turns the bottom to a curve. So then I can click on the handle and I can adjust the handles independently with this anchor point tool. What's great about the anchor point tool is it's not going to accidentally move my anchor point at all. It's just going to change the curve. And if I accidentally make a curve that I don't want, like that, all I have to do with the anchor point tool is click on the anchor and it will convert it back to being a straight. Okay. So where else do I want to curve? I want to curve right here. So you get to see like the right way and curve around the head of Nico there. And then I can take this handle. It's a little hard to see with the blue. But then I can adjust the curve on one side. to be as sharp as I want. All right, now if I use the small selection tool, I could move the anchor point, right, like we talked about. But what I really need to do is I need to add more anchor points, right? So if you go to the pen tool and you hold down plus, You'll see that now my pin tool, it's added the tool to the bottom here, is an add anchor point tool. And so now on a path that's really clean, because the pin tool doesn't make extra anchor points, I can just click and add some extra anchor points that then I can move and play with. So I'm going to, mine's a pretty complex shape. I'm cutting out this stuff. So I'm going to add those anchor points for now. Then I'm going to go to my small selection tool, and I'm going to start moving them. So for instance, I'll move this one to here. Maybe I'll add another anchor point. Going to the pen tool, hitting plus, building it up. So it really depends on, on what kind of logo you're doing. But the pen tool can be really, really helpful in keeping it efficient and clean, especially when you want straights and really even curves. 
So for instance, this curve, which goes all the way back to here. Let's figure that out. So I'm going to change to the anchor point tool. I'm going to first fix this curve on one side. Get it to where I want. That looks good. And then close the anchor on the other side. Maybe take it all the way back so it's straight. So remember, you have a curve, a handle for the curve on both sides. So if you take it all the way back to the anchor point on one side, then it will be curved on one side straight on the other. And that's how a lot of complex shapes are constructed. Next, I want the curve on this end. Oops. So I click on it and drag out. There we go. And I'm looking at how the curve rests on the inside of the helmet there. And I can adjust that handle independently. Can I get it right where I want it? even improving on your sketch. And then I could take the other handle which is where there it is way out here. So I'm going to zoom out. I'm just trying to show you where it is. And then I'm going to drag this back without having to worry about messing up that curve I just set. Then, with the, the pen tool and hitting plus to add an anchor point, I can start doing these crenellations, which are what you call these little divots, like the, the tower of a castle wall. So I'm just going to create a ton of anchor points here to play with. Because every time you change direction, you need a new anchor. That's how vectors work. Then I use the small selection tool. And I start moving them. And I can get perfect straights. It's good to start with straights. And then I can play with curves. But all these kind of nuances and changes in direction require more and more anchor points. And if you want just the additional anchor point tool to be added, you click on the three dots and you just drag it into your pin tool options. You can also subtract anchor points. So I might as well put that in and you would just use minus for that. So you're really figuring out the tools that, that work best for your design. So getting the most out of your pen tool. These are complex shapes to be sure. So shortcut is just if I just hit plus at any time it will change it to the add anchor point tool. I think no matter what tool I'm on. But you have to make sure you click on the existing path. And this is the way to build them super efficiently. Add an anchor, add an anchor, small selection tool, push them into place. And you see how even though I'm using a stylus, I don't really need one. This could be done with a mouse or a trackpad with just as much accuracy. Because I'm not drawing, I'm placing. Because at their core, all anchors are, are points where the algorithm starts a new direction. And I've got a lot of twists and turns in cutting out this black shape. So you've got to be careful to hover right on the anchor and select it. 